He's on one. Why is there a guitar going on right now? Yes! Yeah. Full clutch finish! I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him. I got him! I got him! Oh. Got him. Kill me. Wait. You ready? No, kill me. Oh. Is he still at one? Yes! Yeah! Okay, I got, I got a kill. I killed one. Hello everyone, welcome back to Stock Up UC. This is the third episode, bit of a podcast, I'm AFK at the moment and I'm basically just going to be playing exactly the same clip as I played last episode in the lead up to when I may or may not come back into the game. So in that time I'm just going to be answering random questions I'm finding online and uh, you're free to listen or you can check out somebody else's perspective, see how they're doing. There's plenty of other cool people in the game that probably have uh, perspectives that are just as, if not more, entertaining. In fact, it's not really going to be hard to have a more entertaining perspective than mine. Moving on. Okay. Uh, so we're doing questions about reading. Next question is, how often do you go to the library? Barely ever. In fact, never. I've not been to the library since... Well, I've not been to a public library for about 10 years, I think. I've not been to a, a, an actual library or any library since I left university. Uh, right, what book has influenced you the most? Hmm, that's a good question. Which fictional book has inf inf influenced me the most? I'm not sure. Probably... I guess Lord of the Rings to an extent, because my writing style at high school is very, very much like Tolkien, so I guess, fi yeah, in terms of fictional book, yeah, definitely Lord of the Rings. Do you prefer fiction or non-fiction? Well, at the minute, non-fiction. What book has changed one of your long-held opinions? Uh, I'm not sure. Right, what do we have next? Music. Let's move on from music. App. Okay, what are the three best apps on your phone? Um, the Alarm One. The yeah, definitely the Alarm One. The <laughs> um, the Play Store, I guess, because that's where you get the apps from. And um, the Torch. There you go. Bon most boring answer ever. What's the most useful app on your phone? The Alarm, definitely. What do app makers do that really annoys you? They don't always make it clear if you've got to pay for the app or if it's free. How many apps do you have on your phone? I'm not sure, probably about... <sighs> like a dozen or something. What's the most frustrating app you've ever tried? Um, I haven't tried too many apps, to be fair. Oh, there have been some apps that have had, like, hidden payments that you didn't know about before, and only then when you dug in deeper you were like, oh wait a minute, this costs money, let's back out now. What's the most addictive mobile game you've ever played? I've never played mobile games. Well, I played uh, Minecraft, uh, mobile Minecraft once or whatever. What, handheld? I, I can't even mind what it's called. Played that once. Was it addicting? Not really. Which app seemed like magic? What? <laughs> what a silly question. Uh, what's a strangers app? Not sure. I'm. I guess I'm not. Really, this is not really good because I've not. There's a phone. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, these questions aren't very good because I don't really use my phone much. So let's move on to sport. Here we go. Sports conversation starters. What sports do you like to watch? I like to watch football. Um, do I like to watch any other sports? I mean, I've I've checked YouTube videos out and things like Gaelic football and um, things like that. I guess athletics, I like watching athletics, track and field, marathons, that sort of a thing. But football, 100%. Who are some of your favourite athletes? Uh, Steven Gerrard. Um, uh, I've, I've had, obviously, St. Johnson players. I've had my favourite St. Johnson players from, from down the years. Uh, in terms of athletics, I've admired people like... Um, Oh, who have I? Who have I liked? I guess, well, everyone, li I was going to say everyone likes Usain Bolt. Not everyone likes Usain Bolt, obviously, but Usain Bolt's one of those people that uh, is easy to admire. Gabriel Selassie. Um, marathon runners in general, like if you do well in a marathon, that's generally worth admiring. Which sports do you like to play? It's been ages since I've played sports. I've not played, um, like, com competitive football since I was, like, 12. <laughs> so, you know long time ago. 
I would still say football, but I've just not played in a long time. <sighs> Running, although I've not run in a long time either. I like hiking, does that count? Uh, which, we've done that. What are the hardest sport, what is the hardest sport to excel at? Hmm, interesting. I mean, the thing is, I only really know about football. That's literally the only sport I know a lot about. Because that's the thing. I watched a video where it was like somebody got into the Olympics because they entered a sport where there was so little competition that no matter how bad they were, they they could still get into the Olympics. So that sport obviously wasn't difficult to excel at. It was like it was some um, skiing sport. It's like downhill skiing or something like that, or freestyle skiing. I don't remember. Um, Football is difficult to get into. There's a of all the young footballers in England, the proportion that will make it to the very top is about 0.3 percent or something like, or point zero point zero 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 three percent or something like that. Uh, that's in England, Scotland. I've no idea. Um, but the point is, it's a very difficult sport to get into because you do need a bit of luck. You you need a lot of luck. You need to know the right people, and obviously it's a team sport. So if your team doesn't perform, if the players around you don't perform and you're very good, okay, you may get spotted, but equally, your talent may be lost because people around you haven't delivered. So, in my view, that's a pretty tough sport to make, to make it in. But I'm not, I'm not saying it's more difficult, I'm just saying that those are the reasons why it might be difficult. Who are the three greatest athletes of all time? I mean, objectively, people would probably see the boxer. What's the boxer's name? Uh, who is the most famous boxer of all time? Floyd Mayweather? Really? Muhammad Ali? I one of those. I think Ali probably is the one that lo is looked up to a lot. Or Mayweather. Mayweather's current though, isn't he? So probably him. Um, um, oh, I, I'm struggling now. <sighs> I'm not going to say a footballer, obviously, because I, I like football and I want to steer clear of picking favourites in that sport. Um, you know, let's just say Muhammad Ali, um, Michael Phelps and Chris Hoy. There you go. Or Montgomery. Colin Montgomery. I guess if I was to say golf, I'd really have to say Tiger Woods. Because <clears throat> it's greatest. It's not favourites. It's greatest. So Tiger Woods, Muhammad Ali and... Uh, yeah, we'll go with Phelps. Or uh, Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt's pretty good. How much time do you spend watching sports in a week? Eh, not an awful lot. I mean, a lot on YouTube, but not, like, live, so... Yeah, I, I don't really know. Do athletes deserve high salaries they receive? Why or why not? Um, I mean, it's technically not a... It's technically not a case of if they deserve them or if they don't deserve them. It's more of a case of if, you know... If the event they're in is making money from sponsorships and revenue, then yes, I guess they do. But equally, there's always going to be people that are like, oh, it's, it's way too high for what they do. You know, they're just kicking a ball around or they're just doing this or they're just doing that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're making the money. So, like, in my view, it's either, either the athletes get the money or the organisers pocket it all, which in some ways, some ways might be fair because they're the organisers, but at the same time, the athletes they're almost treated as slaves at that point, so yeah, I think it's probably fair. What defines a sport? Is fishing a sport? How about video game tournaments? <sighs> Moving on, <laughs> I have no idea where to start with that question. Do you play in any fantasy sports leagues? If so, how into fantasy sports are you? Hmm, what do you mean like fantasy football? I guess the answer is no, although I, I did play fantasy football once. I've never really thought about that, fantasy leagues for different sports. I'm sure it's possible. Uh, why do you think sports are common across almost all cultures, present and past? I don't know. I think it's like an element of competitiveness. You know, people are always wanting to prove themselves or wanting to compete against others. I mean, that's, you know, in, in some ways there's nothing more entertaining. Well, it's entertainment as well. There's nothing more entertaining than watching people compete against each other. You know, why else are you watching this recorded round? You know, it's I'm competing against, like, 10 other players in this recorded round, even though I'm logged out in AFK and doing a silly Q&A in place of it, you know, the question of competitiveness, there you go, It's that's one for psychologists or or people who study civilization. 
do you play sports video games? Which ones? Is the video game or playing sport more fun? Um, I play football manager, which I guess counts, although you're managing a sport, you're not really playing it. Is it more fun? Nah, I don't think so. Like, if I was to actually manage a club, I think that would be more fun. Be It'd be harder, obviously, but it'd be more fun. Which sport is most exciting to watch? Which is the most boring to watch? Um... Well, again, obviously I'm going to say football, but um, which is the most boring? I guess I've never been into cricket, but I'm not going to say it's the most boring because, like, some people like it. So, in my opinion, which is the most boring? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Let's move on. Restaurant conversation starters. Who do they think I am? Ah, here we go. Travel conversation starters. Where would you like to travel to next? Um, I mean, it, honestly, genuinely, if it was a peaceful part of the world, the Middle East, Turkey, that sort of area, uh, but obviously it's not really peaceful and we can't really travel. What's the longest plane trip you've ever taken? That would be the transatlantic flight from, um, what was it, Amsterdam to Atlanta, Georgia. Nine hours, not over nine hours, I think. What's the best way to travel? Train. Easily the train. Nothing, everything else pales in comparison with the train. What was the most relaxing place you've been to? Uh, the Mediterranean was pretty relaxing. And it was very warm. Do you prefer travelling alone or with a group? Um, probably just... I wouldn't mind... Like, I don't. I actually like travelling alone, so I would say alone. But if I could choose the size of group, probably just like one other person. Yeah. What do you think of tour group packages? No idea, don't have an opinion. Do you prefer to go off the beaten path when you travel? Yes. Yes and no. Yes, I do like the idea of going off the beaten path, going somewhere where there's not many tourists and it's kind of... It's not... Yeah, it's not... I like places that's not touristy, but at the same time, you know, I like to see things like the Colosseum or the Grand Canyon or places like that where there are tourists. So, yes and no. What's the most overhyped place you've travelled to? Um, I remember joking about how overhyped a lot of the places, uh, places in America were. I was just kidding, I was just kidding. Um, Disneyland. No, I'm kidding. Uh, most overhyped. Well, I mean, the only, only reason I, say, I would say Disneyland or a lot of theme parks is just because I'm not into them, but that's more a matter of opinion than um, anything else. Something Somewhere that I thought was amazing, but it really wasn't. It wasn't that good. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure on that one. Yeah, let's move on. Um, have you travelled to any different countries? Yes, which ones? Alright, you want to know all the countries I've travelled to? Alright, we're counting United Kingdom countries as well. So in that case, I've been to England, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Republic of Ireland. That's not a United Kingdom country, but we're, we're on to non-UK countries now. Uh, France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, America, Mexico... Rwanda, I'm going to count Qatar because why not, and have I covered everything? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I missed anyone out. Oh, uh, Dundee. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Where is the most inspiring place you've been? I mean, that's I've kind of answered that. What's the best thing about travelling? How about the worst thing? Best thing is... It's, I guess, memorable experiences, different experiences to what you're used to, seeing a different culture, different country, different, even just area. Because, I mean, let's be honest, you don't always travel out of your country, so seeing a different area is always nice. What's the worst thing? Um, at times, uncertainty. Maybe sometimes you don't know the language. Maybe sometimes you find yourself in a difficult situation that's you're just a bit like, well, help. So, yeah, those those times are the worst. But at the same time, they're experiences. I don't see negative experiences as always being bad experiences. Oh, no, I don't see uncomfortable or bad experiences as always being negative. So, there you go. What's the worst hotel you stayed at? How about the best? Um, I mean, even though, like, hotel. Hotel's a pretty grand word. I mean, when you say worst hotel, the worst hotel I've stayed at is probably a lot better than the worst uh, a lot better than the best non-hotel I've stayed at. So, yeah. What's the worst place I've stayed at? 
Um, I once... I was doing some work in Scotland, uh, so technically not travelling. Well, I was travelling, but it wasn't on holiday. It wasn't on vacation, if you like. And it was basically a house that was falling down, basically. And there was about... Oh, actually, there was another time I was in in a, in a room with... There was about 13 of us on the floor, and it was a small room. Oh, that was awful. Yeah, I'd probably say that. Um, but yeah, it was a house that was... That house wasn't falling down, but there was a house I did stay in that was falling down, and there was about seven of us on the floor in on bloat beds. And then there was one bed in the corner that some lucky Egypt got to sleep in. Uh, how do you think travelling to a lot of different countries changes a person? Well, probably... Wait, hang on, are we back... No, we're not back yet, although soon I will be. Um, Travelling to different countries, I mean, it, it's always it gives a different perspective on, on life because I feel like you can really have a narrow view of your own country, your own existence, but once you go and see, you know, different countries, once you go and see even countries that are far removed, like, you know, for example, going to Rwanda and seeing that side of things, it made me realise, well, for starters, not everyone in Rwanda is poor. That's the first thing I realised. But the second thing is, I re realised just how lucky we were in the UK with what we had and some of the things that the, the Rwandans didn't have, or not all the Rwandans, but some of them, the poor ones, didn't have. So, yeah, it, it certainly makes you appreciate things a bit more. Gives you a broader perspective, I would say. Yeah, we'll go with that. Talk about some of the interesting people you've met while travelling. Um... Try to think. Interesting people I've met while traveling. I've had a mind blank. Yep, mind blank. Moving on. I mean, obviously, I've met like Zenger and the Kate Core guys in America, but I, like, I didn't just meet them. We didn't. We didn't just bump into each other. <laughs> uh, what do you think about staycations? Wait, what do you think about staycations, vacationing, and seeing tourist attractions where you live? Yeah, that's cool as well. Although there's not that many that I've not been to around where I live, so there you go. Um, where do you get your recommendations for what to do and where to stay when you travel? Um, nah, I, I can It's not a private question. I just don't know what to say to that. Oh, technology starters. Come on, there's got to be. What's the next section? Clothes and fashion. Goals. Maybe we should do goals. Seasons, holidays. All right. Well, last last Q and A section will be seasons. We'll do the seasons one. Do you prefer summer or winter activities? I would say summer, hundred percent. I don't like the cold. What do you like to do in spring? Well, at the minute it's spring, and I'm sitting inside, so sitting inside. Did your family take seasonal vacations? No. Well, sort of. We'll go with sort of. Which you prefer, fall or spring? Spring, because it means summer's coming. Which season are you most active in? Um, the season I decide to go out, which sometimes happens to be winter. What was the most refreshing thing on a hot summer's day? A good glass of water, I guess. Um, what? Where is the nicest place you've been to in fall? Germany was pretty nice. I went there and and by fall, obviously, they mean autumn. Although fall was an English word, as opposed to an American word back in the day, so it shouldn't really be that different. But yeah, autumn, probably Germany. What is, the, what is your favourite thing to eat or drink in winter? Apple crumble? Drink? Hot water? <laughs> um, is it better to live where there are four seasons or where one season takes up most of the year? That's a good question. I've never had experience of where one season takes up most of the year, so I can't really compare. It's nice having four seasons, but it also sucks when, you know, it rains and you don't expect it to or you don't want to do. Anyway, back to the present. I've arrived back in the game, as you will have seen, and uh, thank you for listening. All right, greetings, folks. Um, we're back. So this is episode three. Looks like it's near the end of episode three.
Sorry, I'm just trying to get to the. Um... Oh right, wait. I've not I've not done anything to. Okay, but do you not need to eat gaps? I feel like I, I need to take. I, I feel like I need to take two hearts because you you get a pair you get a potential heart. You don't get you know actual um actual hearts. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. I probably what I'm going to do I think is combine episodes two and three into one because that was yes a bit of a mistake on my part. So here's the thing, right? I was using a uh, I was using my laptop which is set up next to my my screen and all that, and I thought. It'll be fine because I'll, I'll I'll just have to, you know. I can just hang on. I, I thought I saw a spider over here. Probably passed a spider to be honest. In fact, should we just go in here? Let's just go in here and hopefully nobody's here. Um, yeah. So I thought I was going to be able. Oh, there we go. Uh, you'll find out my story next time.